Well, there are plenty of insects here on this location we've brought you to now. Uh, also the birds, perhaps you can hear them. Uh, we've come here to this farm in southern Portugal to meet uh, one of Portugal's top climate change experts, Professor Filipe Duarte Santos. Thank you for being Hello. with us. Hello. Hello. And the man who owns and runs this farm. Hello there, Alfredo Sendim. Welcome. Now, uh, Alfredo, this is a quite a traditional kind of farm in a way, I understand. Uh, can you tell us about what you have here and what you do? So, we run here a very complex system uh, based on trees. There are shen, uh, uh, oaks, they produce acorns. We use acorns for animal feeding, but especially for human feeding. Yeah. And uh, then we, we have different types of animals, cattle, we have sheep, we have pigs, we have chicken for eggs, for broilers. And we have primarily plants like leguminoses, cereals and horticulture. So a little bit of everything and, and, and actually kind of in the same place often. Yes, yes, yes. It's a mosaic of biodiversity that it's mainly uh, pushing by cooperation. Uh, and Philippe, this is something that historically is actually very traditional in Iberia. Yes, I mean, uh, it exists uh, in Spain. It's called the Eza. Here it's called Montal. And it started uh, around the, the Middle Ages. And it's a very sustainable ecosystem, agroforest uh, um, system. So it's, it's something that, that's quite old and traditional, but Alfredo, I understand you're somewhat of a pioneer. In terms of modern farming, this system is relatively new, in a sense. So it's an innovation that we will recover this inspiration. And with the new technology and the new challenges that we have today, we pick the inspiration, but of course we have to develop it and we have to see if we can even doing a better system and more adapted to climate change. Well, thank you very much for telling us about your farm, Alfredo. Uh, we'll leave you to carry on with your work. Thanks very much. And uh, Philippe, let's take a little walk here uh, alongside these trees. Um, and clearly, as you explained, there's a big interest in terms of biodiversity, but also in terms of desertification. Uh, we've heard a warning that as much as half of Portugal's land could become desertified within the next few decades. Yes, we have here a very big infrastructure that is very positive as regards adaptation to climate change, which is a huge dam, one of the largest dams in, in southern Europe, uh, which is called Alqueva. And this has allowed for intensive agriculture. But the problem is that one has to take care about the soil because the soil is essential for agriculture. And uh, the water from this dam has lots of fertilizants and uh, therefore there is the risk of salinization. We have almond growers coming from the United States here because in, in, in the United States, what happened is that there is no water for so many almond groves and therefore they came here and they are reproducing what they did there here. Uh, and uh, this is not sustainable, you know. I mean, it, it will work for 40 years, 50 years, but then what about the quality of the soil? So in terms of uh, this model of farming here then, uh, do you think it's something that should be actively promoted by the national government, by the EU, financed as well? Yes, I think so. I think uh, this is, uh, is uh, an asset, uh, you know, uh, from the point of view of nature, of biodiversity, uh, that is very important uh, for, for, for Europe. The important thing is that the European policies on, on farming, on agriculture, take really into account the specificities of each country, you know. And, and uh, it's very important that they talk with people. They visit farms like this, you know, no, no, not in, a, in an office. I mean, uh, politicians and, tech, and, and the people who help them have to come to the ground, I mean, and, and talk to people, to people who know, who live here. Well, we can see absolutely how, how green uh, this area is, how diverse the landscape is. And as we've heard in our programme, Portugal is literally playing with fire at the moment. Unfortunately, things always come back to money. However, uh, there are a lot of people, especially in rural areas, who are suffering economically. Is it viable to think that more Portuguese farms could, could transform into this model? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a question of incentives. There have been in incentives to, to cattle, to grow cattle. Now, cattle is not adapted to this ecosystem. So putting cattle here, well, it, it, it gives money for a certain period of time. It's lucrative, but then you, you don't have the system. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Philippe Duarte Santos. It's been so interesting to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Very nice. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
Well, and moving on from these uh, agricultural solutions to uh, bringing about more biodiversity and helping to hold off desertification, uh, Luke Brown, our reporter, has been up into northern Europe to have a look at some more technological solutions as uh, it is predicted that sea levels will rise and land all around Europe will become drier.